Chris and this is my 1978 Datsun 280Z going through the carburetors. The 78 has fuel injection. I ended up putting these carburetors. These are the ones everybody hates, the flat top Hitachis. We're gonna go ahead and go through them and try to understand them a little bit. So it's my first time messing with these style carburetors. So if I get something wrong, please leave a comment correcting me, but don't just start making crap up based on stuff you've read in the forums over the past years. I do not care. I only want experienced opinions and actual facts on my channel. So it got hot again in Houston, so I'm gonna have that fan in the background. Don't hate me, let's take that thing apart. So I believe these came off of a 1974 260Z. First thing to note is some of the parts are different on the two carburetors. This is the first one or main carburetor number one. So especially if it's your first time messing with the carburetor, take as many pictures as possible from all angles up down left right and try to just look at it for the first time and see if you can start figuring out what is what can you even tell which side is the intake sign and what in the heck is this little thing up here it's a dipstick it's like a little oil thing what in the world is going on so first thing let's get some of this nastiness off the carburetor So the air comes in from this side right here. So when that butterfly is closed, this is intake manifold right here. Notice we have an intake manifold port. So come down here and notice that these two lines, these are water lines. So the carburetor is water cooled and the fuel bowl is also water cooled. So I would avoid messing with these two right here. You're gonna have to remove the shield because number one, it's super sharp like a razor blade and it's keeping us from taking the fuel bowl cover off. So Chris's tip of the day is how can you tell when a complete dumbass worked on something? Now you might think I'm a complete dumbass, that's fine, but I don't do this kind of stuff right here. The dead giveaway of screws or bolts that are over tightened, over torqued. Look at that right there. Every single screw on the other one was major, majorly over torqued. Let's check. Okay, first time messing with this one, let's see. Oh God. I swear I can't make this stuff up. Let's just try a random screw number two. <laughs> this stuff is just weird. Let's just move to another part and test this theory of mine. Okay, that was easy or normal because you know what? They probably never messed with this part. Okay, that's normal. This one's not normal. Let's see. <laughs> Look at it, it's it's over torqued. Oh god. Okay, what in the heck is this? So these are engine manifold vacuum. I don't know what they do yet. Okay, this is your power valve right here. We need to inspect this 100 percent but be careful you could rip all your gaskets and don't be mad at me. Warning, take this off at your own risk. You can damage the diaphragm or you could rip apart your gaskets. So this carburetor appears to be rebuilt in the last 20 years at least. Just drop them, you got three long, three short screws, power valve, hopefully the diaphragm will come apart. It did, very cool. Notice we have a spring in there. We'll put all this stuff back together real neat. So if this thing is working right, It'll actually be springy towards the inside. It's stuck, 100% stuck. Do this at your own risk, we're gonna pull it. It's stuck. Okay, there it goes, okay. See now, be very careful, do not rip this diaphragm right here. I don't even know if they sell it. It doesn't look like the kits come with it. To be honest with you, it has to though, right? So notice the diaphragm can spin around in there and see it move back and forth about an eighth of an inch so far so good we got to crack this other one open got another pair of channel locks we're gonna try to oreo this hoe oreo that hoe Ooh, it worked all right we'll take a closer look at this in a second but notice how it's free just a little bit you're gonna inspect that little washer in there everything looks good but it was stuck 100 percent. that's why we have to go through this it's got the little nut on there like that just hold it Unscrew it, lefty loosey, righty tiny. So whenever you get this apart, you want to inspect that diaphragm. Oh no, what is this? I'm gonna go ahead and give this a bath in gas. Take a bath. Same thing with this right here. It's got that little seal. You want to inspect it for trash, give it a bath. 
So it doesn't look perfect, but it's not ripped. If it's ripped, you're going to have to get a new one. Okay, all oh, that looks good. Okay, so if your gasket's stuck like that, you can gently try to take it off. Okay, if it comes off, great. If it starts to rip, just leave it on there. Don't mess with it. This actually should come off. Oh, there it goes, it did. All right, so there's some kind of vacuum adjustment right there for both carbs. I am not touching that. Hopefully that's a factory setting and I have no idea what that means or does. I live in Houston, Texas and I don't run choke, so we're gonna remove this. But it's very, very important to see where it's getting its vacuum signal from. These two right here connected to engine manifold vacuum and are feeding the top vacuum signal to the power valve. So this other port right here is getting the vacuum signal from the center inside of the carburetor. We'll see it. And this is also where it's going to inject the fuel that it does use when the vacuum drops. We'll, we'll look at it here in a little bit. Let's give these a second. <laughs> oh my God. It's like 30 pounds. It's like 30 foot pounds. Good God. And this fuel bowl is on the bottom of the carburetor. So it does have some cutouts for the float drop and also to collect trash. So you could say that's a good thing. So they said these were off of a running car. Now, of course it was running at some point, but this car was not running. So the needle and seat is stuck on this one too. This pin right here was stuck on the other one. I had to mangle the float to get it out. I would go ahead and remove the float first. Let's see how tight this is. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. Well, maybe that was like 20 foot pounds. So these carburetor parts always have some type of sealing ring. You don't have to torque the stuff down like that. On the other one, this pin right here, I could not get it out to get the float out. So we're just gonna spray a bunch of crap in there. See if it loosens it up, which it's not. So I didn't buy a kit. So just kind of take a note of the fuel float drop. I don't really think it matters on this carburetor. So we gotta slide that pin out best thing I can think of is a small file to kind of get a grip. Let's see if this works. <laughs> it's not working, of course. Right, so I'm going to have to mangle the float. I don't want to show that on camera. So I'm going to go ahead and show it because you guys and girls need to see how things really go down. So I've tried everything I can to get the pin out. It won't come out. We're just going to have to mangle the float. We can straighten it back. But we got to get this tab out of the way of the pin by whatever means necessary. See, we're mangling the float. Now we're gonna try to move the pin back and forth and hopefully it'll just start sliding out, which it is, it is. All right, this one's way easier crazy the other one oh my god i spent 30 minutes on it and you can see it's not easy to get these out this one's bent this is completely bent up what the heck so it's all just perfectly straight except for this tab you can straighten it back you're gonna have to get creative so we're gonna go ahead and get the little spring off first don't want to damage it we're gonna reuse it it's actually bent wrong Okay, needle and seats, 10 millimeter. Good God. The other side was stuck so bad I had to hammer it out with a drill bit. I've never seen a needle and seat get stuck like this ever. So it's got this little spring piece that should come out. That came out, that's fine. It's raining on me, awesome. Gonna have to hit the rubber part of the needle and seat. Hopefully we just damage the inside and not the seat part it's all you can do there it goes all right see what we were doing we were hitting it right there and this piece of the drill bit was hitting right there on the needle and seat so hopefully it didn't hit the part that seats and it'll still work so somebody out there's like well that's why you just replaced the needle and seat buddy Okay, they don't sell the needle and seats by themselves. You have to buy two carburetor kits. So that will be worst case scenario of these flood. So you can already see how tight that is. 
doesn't even want to go back in there all this has to be completely free flowing and free moving 100 percent how you clean it up is up to you all right so we're going to remove the choke so the fuel comes in right there and there's a fuel filter in here let's see how over torqued this one is come on man you can't be serious i can't even take it off I have to get a three quarter inch half inch ratchet let's try somebody out there might be like well you can't get enough torque on it with that quarter inch ratchet i use a small ratchet on the small stuff so i don't over torque it and rip it out right here we had no choice the fuel filter it's probably going to fall apart be careful uh. yeah i didn't see these for sale either all uh, right very delicate thing just try to flatten it out just a little bit or stretch it just a little bit oh this top thing let's see how over torque these are <sighs> damn what is under here i don't know Ooh, high tech there's a little dipstick just gonna leave that alone don't know what any of this does so then this piece comes out it's got a little bit of dirt on it that's our main needle so this machine aluminum this is brass it's a heavy weight to hold it down a little bit be careful with the needle let's see if we can clean this crap up that feels like paint so you can see what it looks like on the inside kind of look down so that's our main throttle blade and notice we have manifold vacuum so if this is idling we have a lot of vacuum on that port right there these are your water lines that are cooling the air temperature a little bit and our fuel in the fuel bowl cooling it with water running through it from the radiator the fuel comes in through here goes through a fuel filter right there and into the bowl through the needle and seat right there so this is all screwed up. This is supposed to go in there and block that little hole off when the float raises it and closes it. You only have about three or four PSI or pressure on the fuel pump. And then we have two on this one. So it makes it work pretty good. This needle and seat has a little spring that kind of assists it and helps it. All the stuff's got to be cleaned up. Perfect. So we have a little window into the fuel bowl and that's where our level is going to be. I'm not sure how that's going to work it if it's supposed to be there at all times or when it's running only but we'll figure that out i don't see any needles you adjust for your idle mixture but somebody was saying this does have a separate idle circuit and the only thing i can see on it is that pretty sure lawnmowers and small engines have that it's just submerged in the fuel bowl and it comes up there and i guess it allows vapors in here or maybe if there's a vacuum it'll pull little droplets to idle so someone let me know is that an idle circuit or is that just to help it start circuit because it's always open there's nothing that's going to block it off and on the other carburetor this was 100 percent blocked off it took me over five minutes just to get that little thing unblocked before we clean it let's see if it's even blocked we're going to take our carb cleaner and it should blow out see it's in there put your safety glasses on Okay, this one's not blocked. The wire fits in at the bottom, but you're not gonna see it at the top. It's one of those super tiny little holes that we'll see here in a second on the power valve. Ah, I blew on my face, what the fuck? So that's our vent to our fuel bowl. Right there, blow it out. Always test it out if you need to. Let's see. And then this is our suction line to our power valve right there and on the other carburetor it was completely blocked 100 percent so this is our power valve suction line it should blow right through okay this one's good okay direct port from the power valve suction line. so this needle just sticks in the main jet right there and the more the needles in it it's going to restrict the fuel so this like piston thing also uses engine manifold vacuum for some reason so Maybe it's a combination of things that lift it. I don't know yet, but that brass weight is kind of heavy. But either way, this is the main jet. If the needle's all the way down, it's gonna restrict the fuel. And as it lifts it out, it's gonna allow more fuel just to be sucked out, like through the Venturi effect. 
the main point of the Venturi effect. Hopefully it works great, I don't know. All right, so our power valve, we understand that this is the suction line to it. So the middle hole of the power valve is also where it's gonna feed the gas and enriching it. So get some carburetor cleaner in that second hole. And then the top hole is getting our engine manifold vacuum signal from right here. Ah, it's got on, it's getting on me, god dang it. Ew. So was this carburetor running? No. So this is your fuel inlet and the second carburetor didn't have this line and if you look it just goes right there i don't know what it does or what it's for just be aware of stuff like that that will be one of the first things i cap oh my god look at all this oh my god so i did give the power valve diaphragm a little bath and gas just to soften it up i don't know how long it's been dry so we have three holes. The bottom one is the fat one that sucks the fuel out of the carburetor bowl. That's fine. So this one is getting a vacuum signal in the center of the carburetor. This is getting a vacuum signal at engine manifold. So see our throttles closed, we're idling, and our engine manifold vacuum is strong right here. So the other vacuum signal is right there in the center of the carburetor. So if we have vacuum on this side and atmospheric pressure on the other side, what happens whenever we open a throttle? Broom! all that pressure rushes in and drops our vacuum back here and then the gas that's sucked in from here through the vacuum gets pulled in with this vacuum that's and then squirts a little amount not sure how much but it's just going to look like little strings of fuel coming out of there all right so you got two little brass jets right there you need to look up to the sky and make sure you can see through both of them that's all you do to that piece so we got some gas on there so it's not dry so there's a little rubber washer right there you need to inspect that 100 percent make sure it's in good shape and it's going to shut off the gas flow right there this is a little seat and seal this has to be in good shape or your carburetor is going to be flooding so when that vacuum drops going to open this up and allow fuel to rush in and allow the fuel to go into the center of your carburetor so go ahead and match these gaskets up only going there one way okay flat washer lock washer nut just tighten it up pretty good so just make sure it moves back and forth and nothing's stuck it should be free just a little bit so I was filming in 30 frames per second. Now I'm filming in 60. Let's see if it looks different. Everything's free. Everything's moving. Get the spring inside there. We can do it upside down. It doesn't matter. Line the holes up on the diaphragm. Okay, over here. There you go. See it's open. Make sure you understand this before you put this back in your car. So there's three screws that are gonna hold this together and then three more screws that are gonna screw it to the carburetor. Keep in mind the power valve only enriches the fuel mixture when it senses the vacuum drop when a throttle opens. It helps it, gives it a little bit of gas. I'm not sure if this one was designed with the power valve because it needs it when you accelerate. Hopefully it doesn't. Okay, so everything's been blown out three or four times with the air compressor, line the holes up, screw it down. Carburetor number one and it has this vacuum thing. I'm not sure how it works. I study it and it appears they have it one turn and three quarters out. It's exactly how it was. Half, one, one and a half, and then so about one and three quarters. Every single day I have to listen to that. All they're doing is backing out of their driveway. So we clean this up. You want that needle and seat to be able to drop out on its own. It can't be catching in there. This little piece, a little springy. Okay, so there's all kinds of crap in there. I took a quarter inch drill bit, kind of walk it around and clean all the crap out of it. It was full of trash. So that little spring is just there to make sure the float doesn't stick close. Looks good. Don't forget that. Okay, so I'll file the shaft down until it's perfect. Slides in there, slides out super easy. You want to take the time and do this. 
See how it's super easy in there. Don't damage a needle. We have a fuel filter. It's actually damaged a little bit. We'll put it in there anyway. What the heck? I don't think this goes anywhere. Yeah, that's not even going anywhere. So I've never messed with one of these carburetors, but you see what I just did? I took it apart, tried to understand the best or most that I can. And from what I've seen so far, we can go ahead and remove this. It doesn't go anywhere. And we can plug these two off for right now. Everything else is going to have to be hooked up. Okay, so I use these that are different colors so that we can notice them. I only use the black ones when I'm 100% sure they can be blocked off. There you go.